I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this combination CCNA and Network Plus 2009 video training session on trunking with Cisco switches. And as you take a look at the URLs for our tutorial websites, we've got Cisco and Microsoft tutorials at thebryantadvantage.com slash tutorials.htm, and then a new uh, website dedicated strictly to Network Plus 2009 certification as well as networkpluscertification.com. I want to remind you that while the Network Plus 2009 exam is uh, vendor independent, it is not strictly a Cisco exam or strictly a Microsoft exam, you're still going to need to know some basic commands of both Microsoft and Cisco networking. So what you see here, those of you practicing or studying for the Network Plus 2009 exam, uh, it will only help. And also, as, as those of you know who have watched videos of mine before, I like to show you everything in operation rather than just tell you about it. So we're going to be looking at some live Cisco switches here in just a moment. Now we know that hosts can be placed into virtual LANs or VLANs for varying reasons. And if you don't know these, I've got some YouTube videos out there for you to watch on this subject as well. Additional security is one reason we create virtual LANs. Cutting down on the overall number of broadcasts on our network is a huge reason for creating VLANs as is the logical grouping of users. Now I say by department here, that's usually the way we do it. We have an accounting department, we have a security department, we have bookkeeping and so forth and we may want to logically group those users and we can do so by creating virtual LANs. It is highly likely that users in the same VLAN are going to be connected physically to different switches. And just like this, assuming that our two host devices here are in VLAN 10. Of course, on a Cisco switch, they would be in our uh, default VLAN, VLAN 1 by default. But let's say we put them in VLAN 10. They're going to be connected to the switch via an access port, which is simply a switch port that belongs to one VLAN and one VLAN only. But to allow devices in the same VLAN but connected to different switches to communicate, we have to have a trunk connecting our two switches. And in this case, it's simply uh, generally a crossover cable is what you're going to use for that. And a trunk port on a Cisco switch belongs to all VLANs. So we're going to have a trunk port on each switch that that crossover cable is connected to. And this is simply referred to as a trunk. Now this being networking, we've always got more than one way to do things. And we better know the difference between the two for the exams and for real life. We have two major trunking protocols available to us. We have ISL and IEEE 802.1Q, which thankfully is generally referred to as .1Q. ISL is Cisco proprietary, and this is a term you're going to see often during your Cisco networking studies. That simply means that only a Cisco device can run it. ISL also encapsulates the frames, and that may not sound like a bad thing, but it is a good amount of additional overhead because every frame sent across an ISL trunk is actually going to be encapsulated. It's going to have a header and a trailer attached to it. Now dot one q is the industry standard which means that any switch can run it. It does not fully encapsulate the frames and it results generally in less overhead than ISL. We're not going to go into all the detail about encapsulating the frames in this video. I do have others on the site ready for you to watch on that but it's a key concept early on in your studies that ISL will encapsulate every frame and dot one q will not do so. You want to verify your trunks on Cisco switches with show interface trunk and trunking ports are not going to appear with the show VLAN or show VLAN brief command. And let me show you exactly what I'm talking about there. Let me bring that down. So we're on one of our switches and if I run show VLAN here there's nothing wrong with this command, but it's generally going to give you more information than you really wanted. Give me one moment and I'll enlarge that a bit. There we go. So you can see the information up here we generally need about the VLANs and their names and their status and what ports are in them. But you can just run show VLAN brief. And that's just going to give you that little bit of information. And to get started with troubleshooting, uh, that's really all you need to begin with. So I like to run show VLAN brief, but notice that we're on a 12 port switch here, but I only see 10 of the ports here. They're all in VLAN 1 by default. If I want to see the trunks, I need to run show interface trunk. 
and you'll see the ports that are actually trunking, the mode they're in, here's that 802.1Q that I just mentioned, that's the encapsulation status is trunking, which is good because otherwise they would not be trunking, and the native VLAN is set to 1. These are concepts we cover in other videos. I just want to give you a good overview, especially those of you working on the Network Plus 2009, uh, an overview of trunking and how we verify it because we always need to trust it, but we always need to verify it. But just keep that in mind when you're on a Cisco switch. When you run show VLAN, you're not going to see the ports that are trunking. You need to run show interface trunk to take a look at that. I want to thank you for taking just a few minutes out of your day to watch this video. Whether you're on YouTube or another video sharing site or on my blog, there are literally now hundreds of other videos for you to watch, so take full advantage of those. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933. Thanks for watching.